Hey, Jonathan here. Uh, I've got a question from Jonathan Meyer who asks, how do you facilitate getting great measurable indicators of success out of your clients? Uh, okay, so what Jonathan's referring to here is uh, having the why conversation in a sales interview where I'm looking to get a value for the outcome that the client is looking for. In fact, first I'm looking for an outcome that they're, that they're desiring. Uh, a lot of times they won't even tell you that without sort of interrogating them a little bit. They'll just come to you and say, hey, what's your hourly rate? Great. Here's what we want you to do. And they'll give you a bunch of tasks. Uh, I suggest pushing past that and figuring out why they want you to do the tasks in the first place, why they matter, how much they matter, when they need to be done, why they would hire someone expensive like you. All of these things to find out what needle they're trying to move so that you can satisfy them. If you don't know what needle you're trying to move, it's, it will be pure luck if you make them happy. So wouldn't it be nice to know in advance what's going to make them happy? Have some confidence as to whether or not you can do that. And if you believe that you can, then you can give them a proposal. And you can base the prices in the proposal on the value of the outcome to them. So that brings us back to metrics for success. How do you know you moved the needle? Okay, so usually what will happen, in, in fact, I don't know if I would take on a client that couldn't tell me this. They will say um, something like, oh, we need you to, um, whatever, make our website mobile friendly. And back when I was doing mobile development, of course, I recognized that for many reasons, that was a really smart thing to do. But I want to know why they think that's a smart thing to do. Because there are a thousand reasons someone might think that. Why did they self-diagnose and decide that they needed to make their website like responsive. Uh, so it's tempting for me to be like, yes, I can do that. I know exactly how to do that. It's smart of you to want that, but I still want to know why they want it. Is this, I, Cause I don't know if it's a big deal to them or not a big deal. It's the, my lowest possible price is going to be a lot of money. So I want to know that they're going to be happy that they traded that amount of money for some outcome. Cause they don't really want a responsive website. They want some outcome. So they might say something like, well, we've got all of these, um, we're getting a lot more traffic on mobile and a lot less traffic on the desktop. So we just assume that that's a bad thing. We can see that our, you know, it's a bad thing if our, our website is desktop only on mobile phones. It just seems like a bad thing. That's not really enough for me because seems like a bad thing doesn't sound like an expensive problem. I want to find an expensive problem. So I might pass on that client if I can't figure out why they really care, or I can drill in and say, well, why not just leave it like it is? I mean, are your sales actually going down? And they might say, well, yeah, actually our sales are going down. And I'd say, all right, well, you know, I don't know if I can control the sales just on the website, but maybe uh, I can control the number of leads or the number of conversions, uh, you know, click throughs, people clicking on a call to action or the number of subscriptions. Would that help your sales? Do you think? And they would probably say yes. If they did say yes, I'd say, okay, how much traffic do the, does the website get? What is the current state? What is the current situation? So even if you are not doing something that it's as, that's as um, closely tied to an obvious number, like traffic on a website or number of leads generated or subscriptions to a, a mailing list or straight up sales on an e-commerce site, even if you're doing something farther upstream like, uh, I don't know, um, marketing, branding, strategy, things like that, you can always ask the client, what's broken? Why are they talking to you? Why are they even looking for someone to do something uh, like you do? And they're going to have a reason. Something changed. Either somebody talked to them and, or they got a... Um, uh, a new competitor moved into their market or there's going to be an acquisition or they want to go public. Something is changing because they're going outside of their comfort zone to talk to outside parties for some reason. Hopefully that reason is a really big, important one. Um, if it's a small, not so important one, like, eh, we've been putting this off for a long time and we, we had a really good quarter, so we just want to spend some money. Eh, that's not so great. But if they're talking to you, they know something's broken something's not as good as it could be. You need to find out what that thing is. How do you know you need a responsive website? Or how do you know that you need a, a brand strategy? Why do you even, why are you even talking to people like, why are you spending your time, your limited time, your most precious resource, talking to people like me, interviewing people like me, something must be wrong. 
And if they can't tell you that, I, I wouldn't have anything to price. I need to know what needle I'm trying to move. But probably they can tell you. They're not, you know, they're not doing it for fun. Uh, you know, the only, potentially they're a, they've been told by their boss to find someone who does brand strategy or marketing or something. Uh, and they might not know the answer, which means you need to talk to the boss. Uh, but eventually you're going to get to somebody who knows what's wrong. So you want to find out what's wrong, what's the current state, and you want to find out what their desired future state is. And you can ask questions like, well, how would you know if I hit a home run for you? Like I'm doing marketing strategy. How are you going to know if I'm doing a good job? How, do you, how are you going to know I'm not just taking your money? And they'll be like, well, I don't know. And you need, you need to figure it out. Like, well, uh, what's currently, what's a current thing that you're tracking that you're not happy with? They're going to say something. Business people track things like that. Um, or they don't track anything and it'd be a bad client because there's no goalposts. There's just no satisfaction criteria. There's no success metrics. So you're never going to finish. So if you have, you know, if you come across a client and most of them are like this, if they're a rational business person, they're going to know something's wrong and it's because they measured something. Um, it could be super intangible. Like, uh, we need someone to come in and, and improve our employee morale. And if they were talking to me, I would say, well, why? They'd say, oh, everybody's miserable. Well, how do you know that? Well, they're complaining all the time. They're like all these threads blowing up on the internal slack, people talking behind each other's backs. I'm getting people coming into my office all the time, you know, to complain about the managers or whatever. I'd say, well, what do you mean all the time? They'd say like, I'm literally having two people per day come into my office. So, okay, now I've got something I can measure. So I could say, well, you know, I do human resources, strategic consulting. Um, if that number was down to two people a week, would that feel like a home run or would that, is that still too bad? And they'd say, no, if it was down to two people a week, that would be like a dream state. That would be heaven for me. Say, so, okay, so now let's talk about the situation in the business. And I'm going to decide based on the conversation, if I have the confidence to move the needle from two people per day complaining in the boss's office to two people per week complaining in the boss office. And now we're, what, are we, what are we measuring? We're measuring morale, something very intangible. But you can measure it because it has symptoms. So figure out what symptoms they're looking at that are telling them that something's wrong and then figure out, decide if you have the confidence to be able to move that needle to a level that they deem acceptable or even better, a huge home run. Okay. Uh, so that's how you do it. You just have to ask them questions. That's how you figure out measurable indicators of success. How do they know something's broken? What are they looking at? And can you improve that metric? If you can, give them a proposal. And the prices on the proposal should be what it's worth to them to go from whatever the thing is, two people complaining per day to two people complaining per week. Is that worth $100,000? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'll stop there. I hope that helped. I'm Jonathan Stark, and if you have a question for me, you can hashtag AskJonathan on YouTube, LinkedIn, or Twitter, and we'll add it to the queue, and I'll answer as soon as I can.